Um, yes, I'm Tara Van Bean. I'm a fourth year general surgery resident and I'll be presenting on predictive factors for operative intervention and adhesive small bowel obstruction. I have no disclosures or conflicts of interest and neither do any of my co-authors. So what do we know about small bowel obstructions? We know that they are very common and they count for up to 15% of surgical admissions. We know that most are from intra-abdominal adhesions, most commonly from prior operations. Without evidence of bowel compromise, the standard of care is a three to five days um, non-operative trial with NPO and NG tube, and this is successful up to 80% of the time. However, if there is no change in a patient's clinical status, it can sometimes be difficult to switch towards operative management. We always wonder, would this patient resolve with another day of non-operative trial? So our study aimed to see if we can predict which patients will fail non-operative management and what is the ideal length of the non-operative trial. Our study was a retrospective cohort study from a single institution. There were 360 patients from 2013 to 2019 that were eligible, and these were all adult patients admitted with ICD-10 codes of 56.5, which is intestinal adhesions with obstruction, and 56.6, which is unspecified intestinal obstruction. And they all underwent a non-operative trial period of at least 24 hours, and they were presumed to have an adhesive small bowel obstruction. The data was manually collected from the electronic medical record and included demographics, patient histories, vital signs, labs, CT scan results, operative details, readmissions, and complications. For outcomes, we compared operative and non-operative management, and stats were done with chi-squared, man whitney u univariate, and multivariate logistic regression. For results, our baseline cohort, the average age was 66 years of age, more than half were female, 72% were white, almost 40% of patients had a history of a prior small bowel obstruction, and the vast majority had a history of prior abdominal surgery. Of our 360 eligible patients, 160 of them underwent operative management, and that was mostly due to failure to improve with less than 6% of people having clinical decompensation, and the time to surgery averaged almost four with an averaged almost four days with a median of three days. In our univariate analysis, there were baseline differences in BMI, history of the prior small bowel obstruction, surgical history, and vital signs. Abdominal pain was associated with lower odds for operative treatment, and obstipation, acute kidney injury, and a lack of small bowel feces signs had higher odds for operative treatment. In our multivariate analysis, the lack of small bowel feces sign was associated with higher odds for operative treatment, and a history of exploratory laparotomy was associated with decreased odds for operative treatment. This table shows just our sub-analysis of the operative group, and it shows that there was a mean, day, mean days to surgery with no bowel resection of 3.35 days versus 4.94 days for patients that underwent small bowel resection, and this was found to be statistically significant. So for discussion, it is difficult to predict based on your initial encounter and initial information with the patient, which of them will fail non-operative management and ultimately require the operative operating room. In our study, we were unable to come up with a predictive model. And when we did advanced statistics, despite collecting over 100 variables, that only accounted for 20% of a predictive model. In our multivariate model, a lack of small bowel feces sign has a 2.25 um, higher odds for surgery. Most patients who require operative intervention are requiring this for a lack of improvement, not for clinical decompensation. And for each day that surgery is delayed, we found a 20% higher odds for bowel resection. Our study certainly had limitations, including that it was a single institution, it was retrospective, and we relied on ICD-10 codes, so there were likely patients during this time period admitted with bowel obstructions that we didn't capture. So for my conclusions, a lack of a small bowel feces sign is a potential indicator for operative management and adhesive small bowel obstruction. And since there are 20% higher odds for bowel resection each day, management of small bowel obstruction should not exceed a um, non-operative trial period of three days. Thank you.